Okay, we have now taken a look at the activities for our purchase and payment process. We've considered the business rules. What are the various objectives and intentions for each activity? What kind of authorization is required? Uh, how can we implement appropriate access controls and application? What, what should the system be able to do for each of those? So now we're ready to start looking at how we can put together the class model. All right, so what are the various types of classes that we want to have? And just remember, we're always going to put them together in the R, E, A structure here. So if we look at some of the resources, well, anytime we're making put purchases and for our uh, sample company, we've got products. So we're going to be dealing with our products. And we're probably going to have to pay some cash. So cash or bank account, uh, however you want to label that so that you can understand the nature of the resource that we're dealing with. All right, we've got a number of events. So we would typically have a purchase order. And then we're going to receive the goods. And then, eventually, we will make a payment for those goods. And we'll, we'll call that a uh, cash disbursement. Now, any time that we're purchasing items, well, we've got a supplier or a vendor that we're dealing with. And generally, we'll have someone in or associated with the organization handling the transaction activities. And in this case, the example uh, has the business partner performing those activities. So we'll just say business partner. All right. Now, remember, business partners and vendors are ordering and supplying us with products, but the association between resources and agents typically takes place through an event. So we've got the business partner handling the purchase order. We've got the vendor that's associated with the purchase order. And that purchase order is going to be for some products. Next, we've got the receipt of goods. Well, our business partner is going to handle the actual receipt of goods. They'll receive the goods and uh, uh, determine if they're uh, adequate, etc. The vendor is going to be sending those goods. And again, we will be receiving product. Finally, the payment takes place. So the business partner will make the payment to the vendor from our cash account. All right, so we've got the basic associations in place. Next, we want to consider, well, events can be associated with each other as well. So generally, when I'm uh, receiving goods, I'm receiving them for a purchase order that I've uh, created. And when I make a cash disbursement, when I make a payment, it's for goods that I've received. So we want to uh, consider those associations as well. Now, purchase order is always going to include one up to many products, uh, but a product may never be ordered or may be ordered many times in many purchase orders. 
So we're working through our multiplicities here one by one. Uh, also a purchase order is always going to be associated with one business partner. Each purchase order is made by one business partner only. Uh, although business partners may make never make a purchase order or may end up making many. And the same thing is going to be with suppliers. We may have zero suppliers. Uh, vendors may never have items purchased from them, but each purchase will typically be associated with one and only one vendor. The receipts are going to work pretty much the same way that uh, purchase orders did. So we're going to have products. Each receipt is going to be of at least one product up to many. We may have products, we have products that we may never receive mainly because we didn't purchase them or even if we did create a purchase order we may, ne may never receive it. Hopefully we'll receive uh, products many times. Receipts will be associated with one and only one business partner and one and only one vendor, each of which may be associated with zero up to many goods receipts. Finally, cash disbursements. Well, each cash disbursement will be made out of one and only one bank account, but each bank account may be associated with zero up to many cash disbursements. We may have cash uh, bank accounts that we never make disbursements from. Likewise, each cash disbursement will be to one and only one vendor. And we will have each cash disbursement associated with one and only one of the business partners. So only one business partner will initiate a single cash disbursement. On the other hand, a business partner may initiate zero up to many cash disbursements over time. And we may make cash disbursements to a vendor zero to many times. So a vendor may receive cash disbursements zero to many times. Now purchase orders are associated with receipts. You can see here we've got events associated with each other. A purchase order may never be received so I guess we could have a zero there. Uh, but a purchase order may be fulfilled in a number of shipments uh, so a number of goods received so up to many. Each receipt of goods will likely be associated with one purchase order only, but a, we may have a receipt of goods that we're not quite sure why we got them, uh, so we've got no purchase order associated with them. Next, from a cash disbursement standpoint, each receipt will end up having, well, we may never make a cash disbursement for it if, say, the qu quality was not appropriate but generally we will pay them in one cash disbursement. On the other hand, each cash disbursement will be for at least one receipt, but we could lump them together. Uh, multiple receipts from one vendor, we could have a cash disbursement that handles multiple receipts of goods. All right, so we've got our basic model here, and we have assigned our multiplicities. So let's take a look at it and see what we can add to it. Well, for one thing, we know that our organization does not accept partial shipments. So in this case, we can basically collapse our purchase order and receipt into one class, so the purchases. So we have the purchases and the receipt of goods handled in one event by the business partner and by the vendor. So let's take a look at how we might revise our model to reflect that. So now we've got just purchases. We'll stick with our red.
and our cash disbursements business partner and vendor. We still have our products and our cash over here. And like before, now we have a little bit simpler model because we just have uh, one set of relationships between the business partner and vendor for the purchases, whereas we had two sets of relationships before, one for the purchase and one for the receipt. We also have one for the business partner and the vendor for the cash disbursements. We have a, an association with the uh, cash disbursement to purchases. We have an association with products to purchases, and we have an association with the cash account to the cash disbursement. And we'll put in our multiplicities. And these are pretty much as we had them set up before. All right, so we've got our rule that says we only make one cash disbursement for a purchase. We may not make one if uh, the purchase uh, gets returned. Uh, we don't accept the quality or whatever. All right, so now let's take a look and see if there's anything else we have here. We know that we've got a need for the product categories because each business partner is in charge of a product category. So let's put that in there. We also have supplier categories that we want to uh, consider or vendor categories, we'll call them since we have vendors here. And again, each business partner or each vendor category is managed by a business partner. So we've got a vendor category. that's managed by a business partner. We've got a product category. Each product category is also managed by a business partner. And then each product category, of course, is associated with a product. Each vendor or supplier category is associated with a vendor or supplier. So each vendor now is going to fall into one and only one vendor category, whereas each vendor category may have zero to many vendors associated with it. Same with products and product categories. Each product will fit into one and only one product category where each product category may have zero to many products. Now, how do we assign our business partners to the product categories and the vendor categories? Well, each product category is going to be managed by one and only one business partner, whereas each business partner may manage may not manage a product category, but could manage multiple product categories. Likewise, each vendor category will be managed by one and only one business partner, and each business partner may manage zero up to many vendor categories. So now we have a class model that has six basic REA tables, and we have added two more type image tables, one to categorize our products, another to categorize our vendors, and then assign both those categories to uh, specific business partners. 
So that's eight classes in our model, and that helps us get started figuring out what we need in our database. And we'll move to that in the next presentation.